I have been working on my game for a little over a year now, mostly part-time. And I've talked about it a couple times on this channel, but I realized I haven't done a proper first devlog. So in this video, we will invoke the git spirit to travel back in time and have a look at the progress made on the project during this first year with Unreal Engine and especially the action RPG sample. So let's start at the beginning. The year is 2018 and I have been playing with Unreal Engine for about 4 years. I have been working on many projects but they were all way too ambitious for a single developer or even a small team. The last project I worked on was a futuristic co-op shooter. I had a small team and we worked on it for about 3 years. That game required multiple complex systems and even though we wanted to make those systems it would have taken us all the time we had for the project and we wouldn't have been able to really work on the game itself. So we ended up abandoning that project after we understood that it was impossible for us to make considerable progress in and I chose to start a new but more controllable one alone. Knowing me, I knew this project was going to be overly ambitious as well but at least I wasn't going for anything like online multiplayer, co-op, or realistic graphics, like the previous games. I wanted to make a third-person roguelike, with simple graphics, but with some nice animations and a gameplay as fun as possible. And since I have been playing with Unreal sample projects and marketplace assets a lot, I had this idea of making use as much as possible of the marketplace and building a game that, from scratch, I would never be able to make alone. Soon after, the action RPG sample was released, which is a project built upon two fairly new systems from Epic Games, the Gameplay Ability System and the Asset Manager, two systems that I was very much interested in but that weren't well documented at that time for me to start using them. The Gameplay Ability System basically is a highly structured and modular system that can be used to manage almost every action that might happen in your gameplay and that affects your characters or actors. You can use it for any gameplay feature, like weapons, skills, items, potions, melee attacks, etc. If it happens during gameplay, chances are you can use the gameplay ability system to do it. But you should also probably not use this system for all actions in your game. Epic Games recommend to use the system for all actions that are triggered by a character in your game. So if the action is triggered by your level or game mode or anything that isn't some kind of character or pawn, you should probably not implement the action as a gameplay ability. The way it works is that you have to first define your stats or attribute set in C++, create some basic logic for triggering and managing your gameplay abilities, and then you can create gameplay abilities and gameplay effects in Blueprint that will trigger animation and affect those stats or attribute sets that you created first. The advantage of such a framework is that you can configure a lot of actions in the same system and have the framework handle the complex common base to all those systems in things like triggering or cancelling abilities based on tags, changing player stats, playing animations, playing sounds and particles, etc. If you are interested in the gameplay ability system, I will be doing an in-depth video about how the system works and how to set it up, so consider subscribing to the channel if it's not yet the case. And if you just did, I really thank you very much, it is really appreciated. The Asset Manager on the other hand is a plugin that you can configure in your project to automatically load certain items to your game without the need to reference them individually somewhere. You can define your classes in C++, you configure the plugin by telling it to look for specific classes in specific folders, then you can create your data assets that derive from those C++ classes and put them in the corresponding folders. And that's it, the Asset Manager will automatically load them and have them ready in your game. These two systems are both robust and used on big flagship projects like Fortnite and combined together can make for a great base to any project that has a multitude of gameplay elements such as RPGs, roguelikes, open worlds, battle royales, etc. So I experimented with the action RPG sample and these systems for a couple months and very quickly decided to use it as a basis for a new project. The sample project was very well structured, had a good integration of both the gameplay ability system and the asset manager, as well as a good balance of C++ and blueprints. And also had some good basic systems for a lot of things I needed to do for my game, and I could see how much time using Shutsu sample was going to save me in the long run. And that was it. I knew what project I was going to make and how I was going to start it. I initiated a new git repository, got to work, and the rest is history. The first thing I did was replace the main character with the Unreal Mannequin. I like using the Mannequin as first character for all my games because it is very expressive in animations and also makes retargeting a lot easier afterwards. 
since you can easily see the angles and positions of each bone and joint compared to other characters on which your retargeting might not be perfect because of how the mesh looks. After that, the next thing I did was prototype the procedural generation. It was one of the most important parts of the game and I wanted to get on it right away to de-risk it and be more confident about it going forwards. And even though I already prototyped some procedural generation in Unreal Engine before, I didn't want to make it from scratch this time around. It is very time consuming and really hard to get right and I didn't want to find myself in the same situation as the first games I worked on where I ended up working on systems more than the game itself. So I went exploring for a solution that was somewhat ready and that I could use and modify to fit my needs. I very quickly found Dungeon Architect and I liked how advanced the plugin was and how polished and well integrated in the engine it was. So I decided to use it and build on it as a base for my procedural dungeons. I integrated the plugin and started building a prototype. My goal was to have a fully functioning game with minimal gameplay. I had a character, enemies and some basic gameplay so I needed procedural dungeons and of course a game mode with a start and win conditions. So I worked on that for a couple weeks and got to a prototype that felt like a game. An empty game but a game nonetheless. At this point I was starting to feel confident. My understanding of the action RPG sample and the systems it was built on was expanding. I was able to find solutions to the problems I was facing and the Dungeon Architect plugin was fulfilling its role perfectly. So I decided to invest a bit more and get some 3D assets. I explored the marketplace for assets that would fit the idea I had and it didn't take long before I found the Sinti Studios Polygon Dungeon Assets. A complete pack with almost everything I might need for the kind of game I am making. And if not for the finished game, I decided to at least get it and integrate it for the prototype and vertical slice of the game. I started by replacing the main character first. Since I already did retarget from the action RPG character to the Unreal Mannequin, the process was straightforward and the result looked nice. I then retargeted the enemies, the process was exactly the same since the enemies and the main character use the same Unreal skeleton. The game was already starting to look different and I was very happy with the results. The next step in placeholder asset replacement was the weapons. And this wasn't as easy as replacing the characters of the enemies. I did not want to just replace the weapon meshes, I wanted to make completely new weapons with new animations and replace the older ones at once. So I had to look for some nice animations I could use to replace the existing ones. And in order to find the right animations, I had to understand how the current combat system was made in order to get animations that would fit the way combat is implemented in the project. Trying to understand the weapons was the biggest step in learning the action RPG sample because they combine almost all the systems, the gameplay ability system, the asset manager and the animation montage system. The weapons are defined as items and parsed automatically by the asset manager, so adding a new weapon is as easy as creating the new weapon item data asset in the right folder and configuring it. It will then be automatically loaded by the game and made available. The weapon also makes extensive use of the gameplay ability system. Each weapon is built with, with multiple assets and all the classes are combined in the gameplay ability class that holds everything about the weapon like the combat animation, the actor that holds the 3D asset, the gameplay effect class that defines the effects this weapon does, etc. So after playing with this for about a month or so, I understood the system quite well and was able to create new weapons easily and I even altered the combat system to fit my needs. I made the movement animations weapon specific and added a light and heavy attack system. I then went shopping for some nice animations. This took a bit more time than for the other assets because of the amount of time you spend watching and re-watching videos for the animation packs, but was able to find the right assets for my game in the Frank Climax animation packs. And I immediately started creating new weapons. To create a new weapon, the first thing to do is to create the item corresponding to the weapon in the weapons folder. Then we create the actor that holds the weapon mesh and capsule collision. And just with that we have a weapon, but that doesn't do anything. In order to have it work, we need to implement the gameplay ability and gameplay effect classes. The gameplay ability is the ability itself and for the weapons requires things like an animation montage that is going to play when we attack. So we need to create an animation montage with the right animations for the weapon and set it up correctly to fit the combo system and reference that in our gameplay ability class. Then we need to create the gameplay effect with the effect configuration, in this case the weapon damage and also specify that in our gameplay ability class. Now we reference our gameplay ability class in the weapon item we created first and that's it, our weapon is ready to be used. The weapon will be loaded automatically by the asset manager since the item data asset is placed in the weapons folder. We'll have the mesh specified in the weapon actor, we'll play the animation montage defined in our gameplay ability class 
and will trigger the effects specified in the gameplay effect class if it hits an enemy. I then spent quite some time integrating animations and weapons to add some variety to the most important aspect of the game, combat, removed all the old weapons, and now the game didn't just look different, but also felt different. After this, I had a period where I couldn't work much on the game. Times were rough with the start of the pandemic, and my morale and motivation were down because of that. But I kept implementing some small features here and there to keep the momentum going and not lose interest. I implemented a character select feature, a weapon specific evade animation, a hub map, and some other things like that. These features may or may not make it into the final game, but they at least served as exciting things to do to keep me interested in the project. And about 8 months after the start of this game, and the end of the first lockdown, I decided I wanted to have more time to work on it, and make it into the indie roguelike that I wanted it to be. So I decided to quit my AAA job and work on my game full time. I took some vacation right after I quit to clear up my mind and rest for a bit and come back fully energized and motivated to finish the project. I went on a road trip around France to see my friends and family, and after that I flew to Portugal for a couple of weeks, which was one of the only countries that you could fly to at that time, and I absolutely loved it. I enjoyed some of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen and had an unhealthy amount of healthy local food. As planned, the break did me a lot of good and I was feeling ready to get back to work. The first thing I did after going full time and besides creating this YouTube channel and making these videos, which by the way I do enjoy a lot even though it takes way more time than I ever imagined, was a complete cleanup and refactoring of the project. I cleaned up all the messy parts of the game, I removed and replaced all the placeholder assets I still had from the action RPG sample and did a pass on the UI to make it more coherent with my vision. I also created some icons for my items and weapons. I used a small utility from the marketplace to do that called Own Icon, which I highly recommend if you want to create icons based on your meshes. For the first time since the start of this journey, the project felt like my own. I had modified almost every part of the game to fit my needs and my vision, and I was really satisfied with how it was turning out. So I decided to update the last thing I didn't touch for quite some time, the procedural dungeons in order to have a nice vertical slice of the game ready to build upon. I started integrating the polygon dungeon environment assets in my dungeon and the game was starting to look better. I had an empty dungeon, but definitely a better looking one compared to the blockout I had before. The issue I am facing with procedural generation is mainly lighting. It is not easy to light a dungeon that is procedurally generated at runtime, so one of the next objectives will be to find a way to have the dungeon look nice and be well lit. And there you go, a little over a year since the start of the project, the vertical slice is ready, and the game is already quite fun to play. There isn't yet as much variety as I would like, but the main character is fun to control, the weapons feel right and fluid, and the enemies are just frustrating enough to keep you hooked for one more run every time you die. The next objective now is to make the dungeons look and feel good. I will be working on the procedural generation to add props, traps, and more variety to the levels and gameplay. And I will also be spending some time experimenting with the lighting and also the art style of the game. So this is it for this first devlog and this look back on the project. From now on, we will only be looking forward. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, it helps the channel a lot. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing if you are interested in game dev and game design. And as usual, my name is Anis, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.